hiding in plain sight. There's a lot of ways that we can approach knowing our own inner goodness or our basic goodness. And it's not a linear thought mind. It's something much deeper. So I think it's helpful to go into this in different different directions, different pathways. So he was talking in this chapter about being really kind of stunned by a Buddhist nun, monk, who talked about you're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. We're all innately good. And we all have basic goodness inside of us. And sometimes that really hits us when we hear those kinds of words. And I suspect with her, it was also her presence as well. That idea of inside, I'm not broken. There's something in me that is hurting, that's experienced a lot of things that have made me separate from my own basic goodness. Our culture really has a lot of ways of making us feel ashamed. And for him, a lot of it was he felt like he was irreparably broken because of his queerness and felt that he deserved everything terrible that had happened to him and that he didn't deserve anything better. That is a really dark place. I think that's part of what makes Sa de Simone really interesting to read his book, but also the way he shares with us his journey of going from feeling that way to feeling and really knowing deeply his own basic goodness. So how do we get there? We see the mistakes that we make. We hide out from people. And it's shame again. We keep returning again and again to shame. Shame is something that is meant to be used for a behavior that could get us kicked out of the group. If we're doing something that's dangerous or that is not approved of by the society that we're in, then we have a big stake in hiding that so that we're not ostracized or exiled from the group. Shaming someone for who they are is harmful. It's not correct. Shame is meant to be a really dramatic, whoa, it's a stop sign. I feel this way and I need to change my behavior. But in our culture, a lot of us have been conditioned to believe that there's something really wrong with us. And that really overrides that feeling of, I know my own basic goodness. For many of us, that had never even occurred to us because we're so associating the behavior and the shame with who we are. So this confirmation of who we are, instead of feeling like we know our own basic goodness and we have some behaviors that we need to change, we have that feeling that I'm bad, and then other people are also bad. Our fundamental shame is generated by our separation from our goodness. This is one of the things I really admire, too, about Sa's perception and his teaching, is that he goes really deep. Our fundamental shame is the separation from our goodness. Gabor Mate, and I've used this quote so many times over the years, that the effect of trauma is that we disconnect from ourselves, our sense of value, and the present moment. We can't be in the present moment if we're full of shame. When we're separated from our own goodness, that's the the genesis or the origin of that feeling of fundamentally wrong, the core deficiency beliefs. Shame is this feeling of, I can't go there. I can't let myself know that. And in order to be free, we need to be able to find a way to go in and feel it and to know that there's nothing to be afraid of. We need to find a way to touch it. And so we need to urgently discover our own basic goodness. But that's what we're going to work with today. And we all know the culture we live in is very shame-based. It's also very disconnecting. So when we're trying to avoid shame and we turn to all of the different distractions that are available to us, Some of them are quite obvious, alcohol, drugs, overworking, screens. Then we disconnect from ourselves. And part of it is we don't slow down long enough to know ourselves. And part of it is the stored trauma in our body that we don't feel like we can afford to really be present because then these traumatic memories are going to come up. We're going to feel that feeling of shame. And then, ironically, we go deeper into behaviors that, in fact, that we are not happy with. So these small actions can leave an imprint in the mind, as he's saying, and encourage greater actions that are out of alignment. Let's pause here for a moment and let that kind of settle in.
we can probably all bring to mind times when we felt out of alignment. Maybe we were gossiping with somebody about somebody else and we we're being kind of mean. It could be kind of small things, although that can have a big impact. Or maybe we were in a relationship that really wasn't serving us anymore. And yet we were so disconnected from ourselves that we really couldn't find a way to change that. There's all kinds of actions, small and large. But the question he's asking is, what does it cost me to have a seat at this table? So if you're in a social group and they're racist or sexist or homophobic or something, sometimes we will challenge that, but it really depends on the social power that we have, as well as financial power and all kinds of other power. And sometimes we'll keep quiet because we don't want to be the target of a bully in the group. But I'm not saying at all that these things are right or wrong. The questions that he's asking here is, are their values in integrity with mine is one question. And the other is, am I inspired when I'm with them? Do I feel inspired when I leave them? Or do I have that kind of murky, dark, heavy feeling of shame? As you're working with that, stay here in this moment. Use your breath, hold your hand, open your eyes, look around the room. The people that I spend most time with are their values and integrity with mine. And sometimes we're just in these environments where we can't really, for a lot of different reasons, get away from it. Thinking of when I was at my grandparents on my mother's side, there was a very cruel teasing that was always going on. It was a shaming. I didn't have any way to get away from that when I was young. Lots of times we're in situations where we're not in alignment. But how are we feeling about how we are acting or how we are thinking about ourselves? Do we have at least some people that we feel like we're in integrity with? And what's the difference? Looking at the one that you are feeling, yeah, I don't really feel like that's a good place for me to be. But then bring to mind and bring into your body some people that you do feel integrity with. And it could be the people that are here in this group. That's one of the wonderful things about being here together in a community. We're working with kindness and respect and knowing ourselves, healing. And let yourself feel into that. So who do you have in your personal life? Or who could you cultivate a deeper connection with? If you were to come up out of that shame-based avoidance, what does that feel like? What are the possibilities there? Let's stay with this inquiry. One of the reasons that he's suggesting we do this is that if we can't believe that we're innately good, if we're withholding that recognition from ourselves, it's really hard to have relationships where we accept someone as they are and know that they are also basically good. So let's look at some of the values, my core values. And we're going to look at being in alignment with my values and out of alignment. And how does this relate to our inner goodness, our behavior, and then returning to integrity? If we're looking at this as, well, I'm innately bad. And of course, in our conscious level of our mind, we know that that's not true. But if some part of us deep down, believes that I'm somehow not good, then that's going to color everything. Play with that a little. You could bring to mind a specific core value, or you could list some for yourself. Kindness would be one. I try to be kind with people, with myself and with others. And I'm alignment with that in these ways. I'm out of alignment. 
So whatever your core value is that you're working with, let's take them kind of one at a time. Don't let the inner critic take over here. We're trying to be steady as we're looking at this. Notice your body if you're feeling that shame. Stay breathing, stay here. You can always pause the, the inquiry. Stay with this for several minutes so that you have time. Notice where your mind goes. It can be difficult to stay exactly right here. And notice the good here too. Notice how you are in alignment. And then when you're going into the I'm out of alignment, it might be something that's a behavior that's external, a behavior that's internal. But how does that work? I hold myself accountable with an open heart with compassion and trusting my basic goodness. And that example I gave of being around people who are cruel in the way that they tease each other, it might be that you signed on for that. And that you've also said cruel things. And as you're holding yourself accountable, can you do that with an understanding of the social power, the dynamics, the compassion for yourself that you were trying to fit in? You were trying to feel some kind of power. That's okay. And trusting that's not who you are. It was a behavior that had a reason it has a context. And then you can go into the last three sentences. I accept my inner goodness. Put your hand on your heart if you want. My behavior is not who I am. So our behavior does not stain or sully our innate goodness. And I can return to integrity. Just the fact that we're here doing this work makes that part true. Let's sit with this for a while longer. You could do a different core value, continue to work with the one that comes to mind. What does it feel like to work with I am in alignment with my values in these ways? What are the sensations and energies? Again, don't let the critic take over and go, well, that's not 100% true. And is it possible, is it okay, is it safe enough to acknowledge, yeah, I am out of alignment in these ways, and I don't have to trash myself. I could actually have an open heart, compassion, and approach it from there. I know I'm basically good, and some of my behavior is not okay with me. I want to do that differently. And what would that look like? It might be some things that you do. It might be some things you don't do. Let's take a few more minutes to really focus on that. 
I can return to integrity. What would that be specifically? And see yourself doing that. My behavior is not who I am. Even when I harm myself or someone else, that doesn't mean that I'm bad. It means my behavior is not what I want to see for myself. And I can come back to integrity. Take a few breaths. And before we finish the inquiry, review it in your mind and also maybe in your body. What are some of the elements that were coming in as you were working with that? Feeling of shaming, if you were shaming yourself, you could notice that. Were you able to open your heart, have some compassion? If you were to take a few deeper breaths and open your eyes and bring in some fresh air, so to speak, what does it feel like to entertain the possibility or the a deeper knowing of your own innate goodness? And that we're not powerless when we behave in ways that are not to a standard or not what we would like to see us doing, that we can hold ourselves accountable without shaming ourselves. We can let ourselves see a broader perspective, a deeper perspective. My behavior is not who I am. Behaving badly does not mean that I'm bad. I can return to integrity. <laughs> 